Hello and welcome back to UIE TV. Please like and subscribe to channel to get further videos directly in your inbox. What? I live on the 11th floor and the glass flash. I heard like two big explosions. I felt the building is going down. I was trying to hide. Uh, I am bleeding a little bit from my feet. I'm okay though. I mean, this put me back in the memory to 2006 when Israel was bombing Lebanon and I, I had bombed an area near me and I thought I'm gonna die. I just had the same feeling today. Everyone dropped to the ground and I remember opening my eyes and uh, looking at the ground and just seeing a dust and bunch of rubble just floating in the mall that we were in. And, and then all of a sudden glass breaking and then the alarm of, uh, you know, like a war alarm going off and the mall had a, you know, glass in the storefronts. All of it broke and there was blood on the floor, uh, probably from the shattered glass that hit them. There was a lady outside that when we left the mall, when we evacuated the mall, um, she was uh, in the parking lot under and the pressure under in the parking lot was much more than the open sky where we were. And apparently she was flown meters, you know, from the from the shockwave. And yeah, people had to drag her out. It was, uh, yeah, intense. <laughs> سيدفع المسؤولون عن هذه الكارثة الثمن. Well, I basically was in a car, in a, in a taxi cab. Suddenly, I lost my hearing. Apparently, I was too close, so I lost my hearing for a few seconds. I knew something was wrong, and then suddenly the, sh the glass just shattered all over the car. Where I'm living right now, we, we suffered from a lot of car bombs from 2013 to 2015. So once I heard the explosion, I instantly thought that it's coming back to us, the wave of car bombs, the wave of attacks, which is something we wanted to forget. So now I'm shaking like, all yeah. of me from up to down. What? 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 Beirut blast, dozens dead and thousands injured, health minister says. A large blast in the Lebanese capital, Beirut, has killed at least 70 people and injured more than 4,000 others, the health minister says. Video show smoke billowing from a fire, mushroom cloud following the blast at the city's port. Officials are blaming highly explosive materials stored in a warehouse for six years. President Michelle Allen tweeted it was unacceptable that 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate was stored unsafely. An investigation is underway to find the exact trigger for the explosion.
Lebanon Supreme Defense Council said those responsible would face the maximum punishment possible. Hospitals are said to be overwhelmed and many buildings have been destroyed. President Allen declared a three-day mourning period, and said the government would release 100 billion lira, 50.5 million pounds, 66 million dollars, of emergency funds. A BBC journalist at the scene reported dead bodies and severe damage, enough to put the port of Beirut out of action. Prime Minister Hassan Diab called it a catastrophe and said those responsible must be held to account. He spoke of a dangerous warehouse which had been there since 2014, but said he would not preempt the investigation. Local media showed people trapped beneath rubble. A witness described the first explosion as deafening, and video footage showed wrecked cars and blast-damaged buildings. All the buildings around here have collapsed. I'm walking through glass and debris everywhere, in the dark, one witness near the port told AFP news agency. The blast was heard 240 kilometers, 150 miles, away on the island of Cyprus in the eastern Mediterranean. The explosion comes at a sensitive time for Lebanon, with an economic crisis reigniting old divisions. Tensions are also high ahead of Friday's verdict in a trial over the killing of ex-Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri in 2005. Video posted online showed a large mushroom cloud and destroyed buildings. Hospitals are said to be overwhelmed by casualties. Lebanon's internal security chief said the blast happened in an area housing highly explosive materials. The explosion comes at a sensitive time for Lebanon, with an economic crisis reigniting old divisions. Tensions are also high ahead of Friday's verdict in a trial over the killing of ex-Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri in 2005. Lebanese Health Minister Hamad Hassan has spoken of many injuries and extensive damage, and the Lebanese Red Cross says hundreds of people have been taken to hospital. A BBC journalist at the scene reported dead bodies and severe damage, enough to put the port out of action. Reuters news agency quotes sources as saying 10 bodies have been pulled from the wreckage. The cause of the explosion is still not known, but some reports suggest it may have been an accident. Lebanon's national news agency reported a fire breaking out at what it called an explosives depot at the port before the explosion. A large building in the port, which is close to the city center, was blown apart. Local media showed people trapped beneath rubble. A witness described the first explosion as deafening. Video footage showed wrecked cars and blast-damaged buildings. Hadi Nasrallah, eyewitness speaking to the BBC. I saw the fire, but I didn't yet know there was going to be an explosion. We went inside. Suddenly I lost my hearing because apparently I was too close. I lost my hearing for a few seconds, I knew something was wrong. And then suddenly the glass just shattered all over the car, the cars around us, the shops, the stores, the buildings. Just glass going down from all over the building. Literally all over Beirut, people were calling each other from different areas kilometers away and they were experiencing the same thing, broken glass, buildings shaking, a loud explosion. Actually we were shocked because usually when it happens, just one area will experience those happenings after an explosion, but this time it was all of Beirut, even areas outside of Beirut. We have nothing left Beirut's residents describe apocalyptic scenes after explosion rocks city. When an explosion tore through the Lebanese capital on Tuesday afternoon, it wreaked havoc on nearly all of Beirut's quarters. Buildings as far away as 10 kilometers from the site of the explosion were damaged. Shards of glass filled the thoroughfares, and street lights were extinguished by its force. At least 50 people were killed and more than 2,750 wounded, the health minister said, and the city's residents rushed to hospitals to donate blood. I was on the veranda when the entire neighborhood shook left and right, Bain fake ear, a filmed maker who lives on the western tip of the city, told CNN. It was very intense. I've never felt fear like this. Sirens screamed as ambulances rushed to collect the injured, many of whom were climbing out of the rubble of their homes. The blast at Beirut's port formed a mushroom cloud and could be heard in the city's furthest outskirts.
A giant red cloud hung over the capital as the city's residents, around 4 million people, began to uncover the scale of the damage to their houses, sought treatment for their wounds and frantically called their loved ones to see if they were safe. Beirut port is totally destroyed, eyewitness Bash Agatis told CNN, describing the unfolding scene as something akin to an apocalypse. It is very, very frightening what is happening right now and people are freaking out, he said. The emergency services are overwhelmed. The source of the blast is not yet known. Lebanon's chief of general security, Abbas Ibrahim, said it was too early to tell, but initial reports by the state-run news agency said it was an accident. The harrowing scenes come after nearly a year of economic and political turmoil that has plunged Lebanon into uncertainty and, according to many experts, brought it to the brink of collapse. Poverty soared to over 50% and scenes of people scavenging garbage dumps for basic necessities have become commonplace. Young people who just months ago staged a popular uprising against the country's political class, widely accused of corruption, desperately searched for a silver lining. I've never seen Beirut like this before. Beirut today looks like our hearts, said activist Mayu Amar. We have nothing left. Just when we thought it couldn't get worse, it did. My family and my loved ones are asking me to go back home because they don't want me to breathe any toxins, but I can't go back home. I have friends who have lost their homes, she added. Their homes were completely destroyed. I have to go and help them. A large blast in the Lebanese capital, Beirut, has caused widespread damage, injuring hundreds of people, the Lebanese Red Cross says. It is not yet clear what caused the explosion in the city's port region. Video posted online showed a large mushroom cloud and destroyed buildings. Hospitals are said to be overwhelmed by casualties. Lebanon's internal security chief said the blast happened in an area housing highly explosive materials. The explosion comes at a sensitive time for Lebanon, with an economic crisis reigniting old divisions. Tensions are also high ahead of Friday's verdict in a trial over the killing of ex-Prime Minister Afik Hariri in 2005. Lebanese Health Minister Hamad Hassan has spoken of many injuries and extensive damage, and the Lebanese Red Cross says hundreds of people have been taken to hospital. A BBC journalist at the scene reported dead bodies and severe damage, enough to put the port out of action. Reuters news agency quotes sources as saying 10 bodies have been pulled from the wreckage. The cause of the explosion is still not known, but some reports suggest it may have been an accident. Lebanon's national news agency reported a fire breaking out at what it called an explosives depot at the port before the explosion. A large building in the port, which is close to the city center, was blown apart. Local media showed people trapped beneath rubble. A witness described the first explosion as deafening. Video footage showed wrecked cars and blast-damaged buildings. I saw the fire, but I didn't yet know there was going to be an explosion. We went inside. Suddenly I lost my hearing because apparently I was too close. I lost my hearing for a few seconds, I knew something was wrong. And then suddenly the glass just shattered all over the car, the cars around us, the shops, the stores, the buildings. Just glass going down from all over the building. Literally all over Beirut, people were calling each other from different areas kilometers away and they were experiencing the same thing, broken glass, buildings shaking, a loud explosion. Actually we were shocked because usually when it happens, just one area will experience those happenings after an explosion, but this time it was all of Beirut, even areas outside of Beirut. The videos and images, not just of the massive cloud of smoke erupting in Beirut but the damage and devastation it is caused kilometers away, have triggered a new wave of shock and anxiety in Lebanon, which is already teetering on the brink of a catastrophic economic collapse. Just hours before the blast, anti-government protesters had been scuffling with the security forces outside the Ministry of Energy, demanding yet again accountability from the country's leaders. There have been grave warnings of hunger in the streets or a reigniting of sectarian conflict if the economy worsens. And the blast will remind many of the bomb that killed Rafi Kariri. 
The Lebanese will be hoping that this latest blast will remain a human tragedy, an accident, and not a premeditated act. Lebanon is experiencing political turmoil, with street demonstrations against the government's handling of the worst economic crisis since the 1975-1990 civil war. There has also been tension on the border with Israel, which said last week that it had thwarted an attempt by Hezbollah to infiltrate Israeli territory. But a senior Israeli official has told the BBC that Israel has no connection to the Beirut blast. The blast happened close to the scene of a huge car bombing which killed ex-Prime Minister Afik Hariri in 2005. Tuesday's blast also came days before the long-awaited verdict in the trial at a special court in the Netherlands of four men accused of orchestrating the attack. Thanks for watching Universal Information and Entertainment TV. Please like and subscribe our channel for more updated videos, news, information and entertainment. See you in next video. Stay tuned.